welcome to Applied Racing Dynamics. If you're watching this, you're probably about to start your very first simulation, and I'm here to help you get from this screen to running your first lap. Now, this is the home page where you'll find useful information like recent activity, but let's start fresh by heading to the settings page. Here, you'll see the different teams you're part of. Everything you create, setups, vehicles, simulations, they'll belong to a team. But let's create a new team for this video. Since teams keep everything secure, your data stays within the team environment. Now, let's invite some teammates. Clicking invite users generates a link you can share with friends or colleagues. When you create a new team, it starts with an F1 demo vehicle model by default. But if you're not working with an F1 car, you'll probably want to add a different vehicle. For example, if you're a Formula student team, you can select that model instead. Now, our workspace is set up with the Formula student model. The tree view is the quickest way to navigate. You can open or close it using this button, or use the handy keyboard shortcut. I'll actually switch back to the F1 demo vehicle for now. Expanding the tree lets us see all the setups within the vehicle, but let's start with the chassis. Clicking the swap out button lets us quickly switch between saved chassis setups while previewing key parameters. The tree also has a symmetry mode toggle. With symmetry off, each corner of the car has its own values. With symmetry on, the left and right sides mirror each other in the front and in the rear. To edit the chassis, we can navigate to the chassis page in a couple ways. We can either click this arrow to go to the chassis page, we can use the setup nav bar, or we can use the search button to quickly find what we need. For example, if I search for sprung mass, it'll direct me to the chassis page. Now, let's uh, create a second F1 demo setup and we'll copy the existing one and rename it. Now, let's tweak a few things here. Maybe I increase the driver mass. Uh, I might adjust the fuel. Uh, maybe modify the mass distribution and let's say change the center of gravity. Now you can see all these unsaved changes appear in yellow and that means they're unsaved. Now if you're unsure about a parameter, hover over the question mark for descriptions and typical values. Next, let's check out our aero settings. Here, we have ride height maps that show how CD, CL, and COP vary with ride height. Now, if you don't have ride height maps, you can disable them and use fixed values instead. To edit the CD, CL, and COP maps, we can open the map editor by clicking this button. Now, if your map has missing data, we also have an interpolate feature that fills in the gaps. Now, we can also configure wing settings, which defines a polynomial for CD, CL and COP offsets based on wing angle. Uh, if you have this data, when you change the front wing angle, it will dynamically update these maps. Moving on to suspension. We have springs, dampers, bump stops, and anti-roll bars. Now, some of these parameters are optional, like the ARBs, the bump stops, and we also have a heave system uh, for the spring dampers and bump stops. Now, for the spring and the dampers, we can define these in a couple ways. We can either use fixed coefficients like spring rate, or otherwise, we can launch a map editor as well, which again shows an Excel style table and a graph.
So let's move on to the tyres. Now in the tyres we can configure our dynamics parameters, our alignment settings um, for camber and tow, and for example if you're unsure about the tow direction, adjust it and watch the visualisation change. We also have interactive Pajeka plots, which update in real time as we tweak parameters. And if you're using Pajeka 6.1, the camber adjustments will also update the plots dynamically. For the brakes, we can adjust brake bias and if needed, we can enable the calipers for higher fidelity brake pressure modeling, which the FS demo uh, template model has in it, but we'll stick with the F1 again for now. And heading over to the powertrain, we can configure again a couple of different things. We have some different power sources here, which will change the accordions which we display. And we also have the drive type, such as front wheel, rear wheel, or all wheel drive. Now for an IC engine, for example, we define the RPM versus torque curve in the spreadsheet style editor with the live updating graph. And I'll just add in a point here. We can see the graph change, but I don't want that, so I'll just hit Command Z. And we can also adjust the gear ratios, and the changes are instantly reflected in the gear visualization. Now, the kinematics page is one of the most visually engaging sections. So it features a real-time 3D graphic updating as you adjust suspension points. Uh, I'll move a point in the table. We immediately see these changes in the 3D model and the static parameters. And if I want to undo a change, I just hit Command Z. The final step is selecting a track. We have several preloaded options. Now we can visualize these parameters. Uh, we have some 2D maps as well as some 3D maps which we can apply some contours to. But uh, you can also upload your own via CSV. Now, if we want to start a simulation, we can do that a couple different ways via the stopwatch icon, which is located here and also up in the nav bar. So this is going to trigger a single QSS simulation and I'm just going to type in a title and we can add some notes if we have them and we can also configure some other things um, if we wanted to include kinematics in this, but we recommend you run your own kinematic simulation first to check that works. So we'll launch that and we can see it's been started and added to the simulation pool. Now all of our simulations run in parallel. So what we can do is also we're going to start a sweep at the same time and these are also going to run in parallel. So I'll select a parameter. Let's sweep the two chassis setups we made earlier. And let's also add in a fixed value sweep, which is where we select a numerical parameter, such as brake bias, and we sweep that over a range. So now we can see all the different simulations here, and we can also see our other QSS is just finished. Um, so this is going to run 14 different permutations, and these are the, all the different permutations. So we'll type in a name for that. And we'll run that. Now, while we're waiting for that to run, let's head over to our results. Now we can see a folder has been made for our sweep. Everything will go in there once it's done, but it's still running. But let's start by viewing our QSS simulation. So we can see it's been selected. It's now in our simulation desk, which is everything we're, we're currently looking at. And now let's head over to our traces page. 
So we've put in quite a lot of work to make this uh, visually engaging and also quite easy to use and custom to what you're used to using. So let's say I want to change the layout. Maybe I want to, you know, make my scatter plot a bit bigger and you can save all these different layouts and, and configure them into any way you like. So we can see we have the interactive plots here. We can maybe add some contour to our track map if we like to do that, let's say RPM. And there's some other visualization things we can change, such as the colors, um, some of the line widths, and let's increase the car radius um, so we can see it a lot easier on our interactive track map. And we also have some predefined uh, channel settings here, uh, but you can also configure your own channels um, into a layout configuration. All right, let's check in on our sweep. So before we jump into our sweep folder, I just want to show you that we can organize our simulations into any way we like. We can add new folders, we can rename them, and we can move different simulations around. Say I want to move this inside my new folder. Now it's inside hit there. So let's just dismiss that from the simulation desk and let's go into our sweep and select all of these and add them to the desk. Now we have all our simulations in the desk. And I should have mentioned before, we can also upload our own uh, telemetry data or other simulation results from other applications via a CSV. So now we've got our sweeps added to the simulation desk. Let's go and view them in our parallel coordinate system. So this shows us all of our sweeps we've done and we can click on them to find out more information. And say we want to maybe look at our fastest uh, four simulations, we can filter them out and then apply those filters to the desk. Now we only have our best fastest four selected. Now to find out a bit more, we can look at our summary statistics, but even more information can be found in the metrics. Now, the metrics are a fantastic way to view a smaller number of sweep simulations in detail. We can get the statistics of a number of different things configured here in different tables, graphs, and layouts for you to explore and find why these differences exist in the different setups. Now, you should feel comfortable starting your very own QSS simulation or a sweep and there's many other simulation types to check out. So keep simulating and feel free to reach out if you have any questions.